Hello and welcome to this video on using solvents in the form of ethanol to extract essential oil products. Steam distillation and direct mechanical extraction of oils is not always going to work. Sometimes the aromatic compounds are too big, bound with other molecules and more. In other cases, the sources are too delicate to be used in distillation or mechanical extraction. Solvents can mitigate some of these issues in some cases. The product of this is called an absolute, and they're produced by extracting the aromatic compounds with a solvent. Sometimes this is an essential oil, although by definition it's not, it's very close to that. The reason we use a solvent is that it can draw out the aromatic compounds in an essential oil from plant matter and other materials. It effectively separates it out in a manner that allows it to be refined. Normally this involves several different steps that allow you to get a very definitive final product. The first step creates what is called a concrete and this is a sort of wax. The wax is a conglomeration of oils that have all become bound up together. This is very similar to other methods used to extract proper essential oils. The absolutes are then extracted out of this. The extraction is a more complex and difficult process, and one reason why this is not a preferred method in most industrial or commercial manufacturing ventures. Despite not being a commercial or industrial option, there are reasons why you would do this at home. One of the simplest but most practical is to create a vanilla extract. The raw vanilla bean you can buy at any reasonable grocery store can be put into a bottle of ethanol, effectively vodka, and this extracts the flavour from it. Other examples that you might use are flowers, particularly jasmine and roses. The reason you use this method for these is that if you were to use jasmine or rose petals in a steam distillation, they would simply collapse and you would be unable to extract anything of any value from them. There would be no aromatic compounds and effectively no essential oil. This is why a solvent is used. Ethanol is one of the most convenient ways of dissolving material. In a laboratory, ethanol, methanol, and other nitrite-based products are used. In industry, petroleum products are used, primarily ether, hexane, and toluene. In some limited cases, carbon dioxide is used to extract particular compounds. In short, you could say there are three primary categories of solvents. Your petroleum-based products, your alcohol-based products, and your CO2 based processes. For the purpose of this video, we'll go into more detail on using ethanol. But in brief, the reason why you might look at the other two is that CO2 is used in a particular way. It's a state known as supercritical CO2, and this produces a very concentrated product and does not use any petroleum solvents, which may be a marketing point if it's an environmentally conscious company. Petroleum solvents were, at least relatively recently, far more popular and more widely used. The problem with this has been a variety of things, not the least of which was the price of petrol. Ignoring terrible jokes for now, the reason it's not used is that essential oils were increasingly being used for things like aromatherapy. The problem with using petroleum-based solvents is that hexane, benzene, and other contaminants could be left in the oil as a byproduct of the extraction. These could cause skin irritation and allergic reactions, neither of which are particularly desirable in something you're trying to sell to people for relaxation. Finally, there are your ethanol-based solvents. Although ethanol is used here, you could in theory use methanol and other products if this was not being consumed and is more commonly used in a laboratory. Your other solvent groups are, to be quite blunt, dangerous. 
Petroleum can explode and is extremely volatile. Supercritical CO2, apart from the fact that the temperature issues exist, is also quite dangerous and poisonous. Ethanol or other alcohol-based solvents are used if you're looking to add whatever it is you're extracting to alcohol, food, and drinks. In very broad terms, it is safe, insofar as alcohol can be said to be safe anyway. It's also somewhat easier. You are, ultimately, treating the original source of your extraction much like tea. You steep it in the alcohol, and gradually the oils diffuse out into the ethanol as they are displaced in the plant matter, for instance, in lieu of the water that is there. There is an exchange of ethanol for water, and water drags with it those oil products. This is diffusion at its simplest. This is why vanilla bean extraction to create vanilla extract is both very easy and very simply done at home. You can use a simple combination of vanilla bean and alcohol. The reason you use this approach is, as we've mentioned, for sources of material that aren't particularly substantial or able to deal with the punishment that's involved in heating it up, as you would with steam distillation. The second reason is that many of the sources you'll be using have very low yields of what would be considered an essential oil. They could also include very oil rich, which turns into a resin type products, or they are very delicate. These three factors are what will decide whether or not you go with a solvent based extraction method or something more rough, like a steam distillation method. One of the other advantages, and less applicable in most cases for those who are doing this, is that the fragrance, the aroma of what you're extracting, will be much finer. This means it's more suitable for delicate things that can be used in perfume industries. If you're doing this and you're less concerned about the aroma as you are about the appearance, that's another benefit to approaching it with a solvent. There are various parts of the plant that will be extracted via those solvents because of the displacement of water and other factors that will lead to coloration of your solvent. This will often be a combination of wax and pigments. Look at what happens with this. It's oak. The tannins in the oak are being extracted and therefore the originally clear ethanol has turned that caramel colour. There are three main products of this sort of extraction. These are your resinoids and oleoresins, hydrosols and vegetable oils. These three broad categories are what are going to produce your aromatics and your other essential oils. Depending on which particular area the bulk of the extraction comes into, you'll find that it appears and functions somewhat differently. As you can imagine, with a name like resinoids and oleoresins, these are going to be more substantial, and generally sold at room temperature extractions. They are going to be very viscous. This means that they're going to be more like honey, if not solid like butter or margarine. They are rarely done this way, primarily because it's very difficult to get a large enough yield from what you're extracting. For this reason, they are more often than not extracted using water and some sort of other solvent than ethanol. They are largely used in the food and pharmaceutical industries. The second group are your hydrosols. They are very, very small concentrations, and they make up less than 1% of whatever it is you've extracted it in. That means you're going to have 99% water or solvent and 1% essential oil. This is true even when using distillation methods. The reason for this is that the water and the compounds within it do not readily separate. The very low concentrations only make this more difficult. The final product that you'll be extracting is a lot of oil, 
primarily vegetable oils, depending on what you're trying to extract from, but largely vegetable oils. These are different to your essential oil in that they are often very large, made of triglycerides, and aren't very aromatic. There will be some aroma to them, as they are chemical and they do react with the olfactory bulb, but for the most part, they are non-volatile. That means they don't separate from the rest of the mixture. Because they don't readily separate out, they remain in there. And this can interfere somewhat with what you're trying to make, and one reason to consider distilling your essential oils later on. The essential oils themselves are largely made from the aromatic compounds, and these do separate off as they're volatile. This process has created those concretes, and you can then go through and distill them. Distillation is what turns concretes into absolutes. It's worth noting that if you are going to do this, there are several things that you can do to try and maximize yield and minimize the effort. First, what you're going to work with is products that should be able to be dried. The reason you want to dry them is to minimize the amount of water in your original starting material. The less water in it, the more the alcohol will penetrate in and supplant where the water should be and extract your volatile compounds. Try and maximize the amount of surface area of what you're working with. This means once you've dried your original material, or if it is fresh, crush it up and make it so that it is the smallest size possible. This means the ethanol will penetrate into it more readily and draw out those flavors, aromas, and so on that you want. If you are looking at using something like an alcohol, you can try and speed up the process by placing your preferably glass container somewhere mildly warm. When we say mildly warm, we are talking about something a little bit above room temperature, between 20 and 25 degrees Celsius. Make sure that it is covered in tin foil or something similar so light cannot penetrate. This is important. Light getting into this can cause breakdown of the aromatic compounds, remembering that they are volatile. This means that you can speed up the extraction by heating it, but you can also cause breakdown either from light or excess heat. This means you don't want to keep it too warm. Steam distillation serves two purposes. Other than the aforementioned use it has in trying to refine your product, it also serves to dilute it. What you're going to generate by using a solvent will be a very concentrated product, more so than what is commercially available. This is not necessarily a good thing. It can be either too powerful as far as the aroma goes, or it can have more of the active ingredient than is desirable. This is one reason why you should consider both diluting this initial batch, but also refining it using steam distillation and then diluting that again. If you're looking at trying to extract something with very, very small concentrations, such as vanilla, you may not need to worry about diluting it. But for most other products where you are creating a very potent extract, you will need to look at diluting it. The exact choice of what is and is not diluted at each point will be up to you and your own investigative skills. Overall though, the process of extracting compounds is very easy if you're going with the more simple, readily accessible solvents. Once you start looking at more advanced solvents, these are things that are used in the perfume and pharmaceutical industries quite widely, and the reason they're used there is because they have the resources and equipment to make these extractions. If you're looking at getting into this at home, start with something that is simple and convenient, water and ethanol two relatively benign and harmless products that aren't going to cause you any harm if you make any mistakes. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions you might have below.